Hi everybody, uh, my name's Gary Rolfe. Um, I've been in the car business for 40 years plus as a car dealer, um, both buying stock and buying cars on clients' behalf to uh, specific orders. Um, today, I've come to have a look at this M2 competition rare car manual for a prospective client. Um, and I'm gonna walk you around it and tell you the things that I would look for as a car dealer um, and what I may need to do just to get this car ready uh, to deliver um, on top of how it already looks. Um, so let's have a walk around. Let's have a look, let's have a look. So obviously, firstly, I'm looking to see if this car's had paintwork. This is a really special car. A lot of them have been raced and rallied. I don't want to buy one of those. I want to buy a car that's been nurtured and looked after. So let's have a look round. I'll show you the things that I'm looking for. First off, I will get down here and let me just add this. It's got to be dry. I actually cancelled this appointment two days ago because it was raining. You cannot look at cars in the rain. I've made that mistake once only in my career. And I woke up the next morning, the car was dry and it looked like somebody had uh, been alongside with a chipping hammer. Dreadful. So anyway, I'm going to look through the side of this car. Easy thing to do. And if this car has had paintwork, unless it's been done exceptionally well, you'll be able to see it through the sides. Sides should look like looking down the pane of glass. That's how it is, right? So, you know, then we look at each individual panel as you go. Great thing with this car. First thing, again, a paintwork thing. This has still got its factory chip plastics on it. Quite often, if it's been painted, people don't bother to put them back on. I want to have a look the other side in a minute, make sure we've got two of them, but it's an important thing. So we look through this, have we got any little na naughty part parking di di ding dents, but they're easy enough to uh, rectify. I'm sure uh, you've seen people pan, de pan tech, they're great, um, but they're still annoying if they're there, but there's nothing on that wing there, we're good. Look at this door, just have a look at this through here. Seals, they get scraped because these cars are low, bumps, speed humps, things like that. Have a look at that, we're all good. Open the doors. Now, here's a trick. Here's a trick, guys, right? Or not even a trick. Here's a, here's a thing that a lot of the public won't look for. If you want to really know, and I need to put my glasses on if something's had paintwork, more often than not, in the old days, people would run masking tape down so it doesn't blow in the edges. But, you know, you want to look at this properly. Make sure you can't see where these have ever been painted and you've got overspray around here and you'll know it's dry. But that's all good and original same down the front here have a look just while you've got the door open see if we're good remembering i'm handing this over to a client i'm going to deliver it to their driveway and it's got to be spot on i cannot stand there and make excuses and say oh yeah but oh it's this that and the other it's got to be as it is and as i describe it so that's good that's all right that door this wing here going you know get down have a look at this to see if it's all good obviously these sort of uh, uh, joints making sure they're together uh, and, and, and as they should be sitting correctly now at this age this car's four years old you're going to see some few little bit of chipping up the front that's not a bad thing i'd rather see a few little chips than it absolutely unmarked um because this car has been used. I'm not looking at a car that's done a thousand miles. It's done 15,000 miles, which is still low, but it's been used, which it's been built for, you know. So here we go around this front. There might be the odd little bit of feather here. Had a little scrape, just like I was talking about here on the, uh, on the seals, parked up too near to the curb, but I wouldn't be painting that. That's not, that's not paintable to me. That would just be Clip that off, touch it in, it's not worth doing. It's not worth spoiling the patina of the car that's original to paint that bit. Just not worth doing. All good here, which is really where you see it. Again, a few little chippy marks here. You know, you can get the paint touching from BMW, touch it in, that's exactly what I would do. And I point it out to my client, I'm not trying to hide anything. We want an original car here, right? Because this car, without doubt, will go up in value. As I've mentioned, this is a manual, um, which most of them are uh, PDK or sequential. So that's good. All good there. This thing here is in the sun. It shows you everything in this color. Again, nothing more than the valet. Bit of tar up the side. Valet takes that all off. That's good. 
but shows to me the car's original, you know, good, good, good. No marks here, no ding dents. Get the tar again, comes off with the valeter, and here we are, back onto this feathering, chipping sticker, still on the car, perfect, you know. It's what you want to see have a look in here look at these edges as we were looking at these ones and we look here on this side see if it's had masking can't do too much in there because nobody can mask it into these sets properly if it's been painted okay so again here gonna look around these door shuts see if we've got anything going on any any signs of sort of very fluffy paintwork uh, you'd know straight away where it's come between the panels, it's all good. Have a look at this, especially driver's side. Has it all been kicked to bits? These, this panel here, yeah, it's in good order in this car. You wouldn't, but they're not that expensive if you just really want to, you know, if somebody's been sort of uh, giving it a good sort of in and out, but at this mileage you wouldn't expect. Look at the inside of the bolsters. Obviously they get worn, we've all scratched them with belts and getting in and out, it's all good. Um, and then we'll just continue on with this bodily, but we're all good this side, all good. Okay, so we're gonna have a look here again at these insets, just around here, seeing if there's any signs of paint. This car's so original, you know, it has sat outside since the owner's owned it. It's not a bad thing, they can do that, but you can see where, if any, it's had paint or anything like that. And to explain that, they mask it. If they don't mask this properly on this inner edge, the paint comes down here as they're painting and you get a dry edge. It's awful and you can't get rid of it. You can buff it and do it, but it's not correct. Um, you can have a look under here. The thing is with these new cars now, you can't really get into it like the old things where you could get out to the sides, but we're all good. You know, it's got its original battery. It's obviously got all of its run flat. It's original toolkit. Those things all want to be there. Um, is there all the provenance of the car and how it's been looked after? Have a look round here, just have a look again. Nothing, a couple of little tar roots, stuff that will get just cleaned off with a valeter, but I think nothing, uh, nothing that we need. Got a big exhaust system sitting down on the bottom of this, just have a look, sort of you know, for this specific car, make sure she's not been ground out, there's nothing gape in there, but all good. Um, Okay, so that's the body looked at, really. You know, obviously it's very obvious if there's a problem with the roof because it's sitting like a mirror in front of you, which there isn't, it's all good. So let's have a look around the wheels here. Wheels are easily rectified by people diamond cutting, painting. I pretty well do every set. Um, there's always something on one of them. Um, so here is, for instance, they're in good order. There's no micro, there's no blistering here, which you see a lot, especially at this age, which is good. But just a little cut in here. Now, would I redo that whole wheel for that? I think I might just try and touch it in again, tell the client, let them know it's there. Um, but, you know, just uh, just look at that when you're looking at them. Also, while I'm down here, just going to run my fingers round inside of the treads, find the wear marker which is a little lump make sure there's plenty of tire between the lump that sticks out and the bottom of the top of the wear marker that way you know you haven't got to put a set of rear tires on the car car the tires are perfect come in the same here have a look at this wheel this is all things that stop me having to spend more money to get the car ready for the client because there's no way i'm taking a car to a client on a pre-order um and as I said, making excuses for that vehicle. The car's got to be spot on. That's what they're asking me to do. So we're all good here. There's nothing around this wheel. There's no blistering in here. Good. Again, find a wear marker. Yeah, tires aren't new, so that's good. That's all good. Haven't got to do much there. As I said, maybe a little touching on that back. Even send a client a picture and say, shall I really get do this? Or are we happy to just go ahead? all good so i looked to see obviously if there's been any curb marks i.e parked it up against the curb and scraped it and also oxidization i.e between the alloy and this lacquer and it looks like a creepy white spider and they look awful so we're all good doesn't need doing 
um, which even at this mileage, 15,000, a lot of wheels after four or 5,000, and I won't name manufacturers, they've gone. I know so many people that have had them done under warranty um, in the first three years. You can, I mean, while I'm here, I tell you, I've done it many times. These, uh, these brake shanks, I will paint this braking shank. It's part of the disc, but they go rusty, you know? Um, and it's very easy. It's a can of primer and some silver paint, and maybe I'll show you that another time, but it's easy to get through. While you're there, have a look at the depth of uh, these discs so these aren't going to be worn at 15,000 again if they were you'd wonder why um, there's hardly an edge on them um, but you know if you've got a big thick edge where that brake pad's been uh, grinding away on them you want to know why so into the fourth wheel same thing guys just have a look around this outer edge make sure it hasn't been rubbed up against the curb teeny bit there again but you wouldn't do that no no feathering down here where the uh, you get oxidization between the alloy and the lacquer again just find a wear marker yeah i've got plenty so we're all good there here's a funny little thing but uh, this car has been supplied by park lane bmw does the front number plate match the back and if it doesn't why doesn't it could be something simple where it got broke but did it get broke because it was uh, hit at the front end, still got it, part lane, so we're good. So we're going to have a look under the bonnet here, just a couple of little pointers that I look for. Um, you can't tell if an engine runs well, we're going to drive it just by looking at it, but let's just have a look at some things before I even drive this car that I look for when I'm looking at any car. It doesn't have to be a, a big powerful car like this. So, you know, giveaways if something's happened to the front end of a vehicle, i.e. it's been in an accident, are all of these light fittings, they've all got stickers from the factory. Quite often, if they've used parts that aren't factory, these stickers have gone, they're out of there. Same as under the bonnet here, you know, if it's had a bonnet paint, had a bonnet replacement these stickers no one bothers to take them off and put them back on it's uh something that's just in the tray which uh, which isn't good again look at this one we got stickers here you can see how original this car is under here obviously before delivery we would have this uh cleaned off not a great fan of steam cleaning do it by hand especially with this sort of vehicle uh, there's so much electrical equipment around them that you can just cause more problems than it's worth to get a nice shiny engine that doesn't run properly anymore um so you know hand clean still got factory uh, 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 uh anti-rust stuff here and everything you know it's as good as it's going to get under there from you um I'm going to look at the service history, but I know this car has a full service history. Again, I wouldn't be here unless it did. Um, so that's it. We're all good underneath there for the moment. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the service history on this car. It's digital and it's here within the car's computer. Um, so let's have a look at that and see. Um, See where we're at with that. I want to know when the last service was, most importantly. So, glass is on for me. Now, have a look. So, vehicle status coming to here, service history on this car. So, great, last service 29,000, uh, 20, the 29th, 11th, 23, sorry, at 14,000 miles. Um, car's now done 15,181, so just done. Let's have a look at what, ha uh, you know, what they did in this service. Uh, engine oil, vehicle check, micro filter, air cleaner and spark plug service carried out. So that's great. Big service. The rest of them I don't need to go into. I just want to see the dates and the mileage. So the mileage before that, 9,355. All at BMW agents this, by the way. Service before that, 9,013 miles. 4,240. 1323 which is important with this car because they called it the running in service and it can affect the warranty as far as engine is concerned with this car it's a real big must with m-powered cars the running in service is really important um, and then it would have just been the PEI at five miles so we're all good we're up to date and great for myself and my client that this has just had the big service um, and obviously this car will tell you when it needs servicing again Okay, so I'm lucky enough with this vehicle um, that this is the original order sheet showing the optional spec. Now, my client has sent me along because it's got the M2 Plus pack. 
uh, which gave it 19 inch jet black wheels, sun protection glass, adaptive LED headlights, Harman Kardon Hi-Fi, but on top of that, a rare thing these days, electric glass sunshine roof, uh, which we're checking a minute to make sure works. Exterior mirrors folding, another good option in the day and age we live in. Uh, through load system, high beam assist. So a good spec car, standard satellite navigation, Bluetooth, heated seats, climate control, it's all standard. Um, but, uh, you know, the plus pack helps this vehicle an awful lot. It's got this nice carbon fiber inside, which is lovely. Um, and, you know, it just helps the car. And, you know, spec is everything. I would rather have a car a year earlier with, you know, correct low mileage um, with a great spec um, and pay a bit more for that than the car that's a year and you pay the same money for that but it hasn't got a great spec the mileage is higher and the, his the history is a bit wishy-washy it's just you know you want to buy the real thing you know especially if you're thinking long term here um, as my client is he's thinking hedging his bets is this car going to go up um, today's market you know 36 37 but you know it could well uh, trickle itself up over the next few years there's not many of them it's a manual um, you know, uh, a lot of the cars advertise, and there's not lots of them anyway, as an M2, a sequential. So this makes this car really special and appeal to a certain person, um, petrol head, basically. Anyway, there you are. Um, so let's just, uh, let's just, just make sure some of these things work. I'm gonna start it here. Might just roar a bit on the pickup. There's that. So let's just check these mirrors. Great thing here. Say in the day and age, we're good. As I said, sat nav standard, heated seats standard, sunshine roof. Though, big option on this car, not necessarily thousands and thousands of an option, but it's a nice, a nice thing. They get a bit sticky when they've been sitting, and as I said earlier, this car has been living outside, it hasn't been in a garage. All works there, tilts from the back too, which is good. Obviously, you can close this off. It's only manual, some of these now on these big four wheel drive panoramic roofs. They're electric, but on this, it's not. It's the old fashioned way push it and pull it. So, this selection will they get a bit sticky and sometimes they won't let you go into the different areas. So, I always just check them. Um, they're not an expensive replacement, but you know, you're in the car, why not check it? Make sure it just goes through everything. We're all good here. This car's uh, uh, spot on and uh, you know, no, no, no problems here. Um, I, uh, I will drive this car and you're going to come with me, but I'm not looking at how fast it goes. I'm looking clutch, how it feels on the brakes, feed. You're not going to get any feed off these discs because they're like new still, but just things like that. Drive it down the road. If you can feel a pedal just sort of, it almost sort of comes back at you. It's, uh, it's because the discs are out you've got to replace them you know they're just simple things little tips um, and uh, we'll go through that in a minute um, but everything else I've been through here heated seats will work um, as I said I'm handing this car over so I take it away I get the car re-prepped ready to go but my client will expect this to be like a brand new car yes it's a 2020 but that's why they get me to come and buy these cars and I handle the whole thing the first time they see this vehicle is when I deliver it onto their uh, onto their driveway, their place of work, or wherever I've got to get it to. So um, I've got to be bang on. It's got to be absolutely uh, perfect. Hence, I spent so much time looking at it. I don't want to get it wrong and make excuses for something that I've gone out and bought on somebody's behalf, obviously. So. You know, I'm going to drive this car. I'm not going to drive it fast. I'm just going to take it up the road. I just want to feel how the clutch sits. Um, I just want to feel the brake uh, system on the car and just how it just feels on the road. Um, I'm sure it'd be fine. This is about as good as this car, uh, this, these get at this age with the history and everything that I've been through with you. But, you know, this isn't a mechanical inspection. This is years of just looking at vehicles. And um, I'm sure, whatever it may be that you do, you can take one look at it, whether it's a spreadsheet or a building or whatever, and know something isn't right. And it's the same with me with cars. I can tell you a good or bad car from 20 yards away, you know? Um, and I would have walked around this car and said, you know what guys, this isn't for me. 
it's not for me. Old saying in the car business, if in doubt, leave it out and move on to the next, find the right thing. Okay, so we're gonna drive it. So incredibly, I need to take my glasses off to drive a car. Um, I only need them for short sight. So let's go. So we're gonna drive this. Like I said, I'm not driving this fast. Just going to get a feel for it. Just wanna see where the clutch is and we're doing clutch sort of, not test here, but gives away a lot of secrets. Very easy to test with a manual car, not automatic, obviously. Just see how this works. I mean, the gearbox is on this, the, 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 this M2, it's really close net, it's a great box. It feels like you're in a racing car straight away. Try as well. Just standard things, you know, you don't want to drive down the road listening to rattles. Um, and the things that, when you're buying vehicles on people's behalf, you have to make sure they're not doing that. <laughs> Because believe me, they'll be back on the phone saying, I've got a rat and it's going to drive me mad. Although I play the music all the time, <laughs> they don't want to hear rattles because they're paid you to do a job here. So, trying to play this car. Clutch in the big picture is really nice and soft. Don't want it to be really, really firm. You know, brake leg clutch on the car shouldn't be like that, especially at this age of the history it's had. where the where the handbrake's on it's not getting and you'd know a squeal that's coming from middle car from the clutch plates going forward no, we're good clutch is spot on it's all good believe me if a clutch is getting near the end of the wear you pull the handbrake on tight and do that you'll get a bit of clutch spin or it just won't allow you to do it car drives great it ought to it's been very well maintained it's been loved it hasn't been driven hard um, and um, uh, absolutely superb uh, for my client it will do the job um, who's taking a little bit of a pit there go up I don't think he's wrong buying a manual definitely um, is a uh, it's a rare car so last but not least, most importantly really, um, you know, the present owner's already told me that there was finance outstanding and it's all been settled, so that's good. I will ask him for a copy of the settlement letter. You want to see that. Um, and you also obviously want to do a check yourself. I check every car. It may be my cousin brother selling me that car but I want a HPI certification or a certification to show that there is no finance outstanding on the vehicle that the car hasn't obviously got any police interest that the car hasn't had an insurance payout um, that the mileage as far as the national mileage register is correct so if you go to view a car make a note take a picture obviously in our day and age of that mileage so you can put it into whatever 
database you choose to check that off yourself. And sometimes finance companies have been paid, but they forget, believe it or not, to take them off the finance register. So if it's still sitting there, you want to make sure the client phones up and says, hey, I'm trying to sell my car. This, you know, you need to talk to your finance company because although you've shown me the paperwork, it, uh, it's still showing on the finance register. I need it cleared before I can pay any funds. You know, don't do that. Um, another little car dealer trick, if you want to check mileage just to confirm, you can go on to DVLA Vossa, uh, check my MOT, MOT history. You may well need the uh, certification number off the front of the present V5 for that. Put it in and it will show you all of the mileages from obviously the point where the car started needing MOTs. Um, with newer cars, you might only have a year if it's four years old or whatever. But anyway, you know, it's a good way of looking back. And I buy all sorts of cars. I, I don't just go out buying performance cars. You know, I get orders for, for all sorts of things and I buy stock for all sorts of things. I am not a car snob. I am a service history snob, a mileage snob. I don't care how old it is. It's how it's been looked after and how I can then present that car to the next owner. Um, and that's how I've always worked and how I was taught by some of the best uh, uh, London car dealers when I was a young kid, just to, you know, be in the business, but let the car sell itself. You don't need to be jumping up and down all over the bonnet saying, you know, come on, mate, you'll be mad not to buy this. I never worked that way. I, I always presented the car, but I made sure like a lot of things in the world, that you buy the right thing in the first place. And hopefully some of these tips will help you to do that. So I'm going to recommend this car to my client. I think that we ought to get this car purchased. Um, I hope that you've learned something coming round this car with me uh, um, and going through the different points that I work with every day. Um, and um, I'll see you next time.